everybody, welcome to today's Sunday School Online Service. My name is Mutende and before we can go ahead with anything, we're going to start with a prayer. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for me making us meet in this type of manner. We, we thank you for the people who are watching. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So today's topic is understanding the maestro of the Holy Trinity, God the Father. First off, we're going to have a praise song and fun time. Stay tuned.
Join us for worship, the memory verse, and then the lesson. Come on everybody, open your mouth and worship the Lord. He's worthy of the glory. He deserves the praise today. Come on everybody, all over the room, open your mouth and worship Him. Lift your hands and bless Him in this place. Simple song. Goes like this. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh Lord, my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah. Sing it, y'all. Come on, y'all got it. Come on, say, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. From the bottom of your heart, lift your voice. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Lord, my hallelujah. Yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Then we simply say, you deserve it. Real simple, say it, church. From the bottom of your heart, tell the Lord. You deserve it, Lord, yeah. And I'll say, all of the glory, yeah. Everything I give you, Lord. Everything I owe you, Lord, it belongs to you. All of the glory belongs Y'all got it now? Come on, say it. All of the glory belongs go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you.
Morning children, happy Sunday. I hope you're all well. It's been a while since I last featured on the online Sunday service. I'm so glad to be back. I hope you've had a good weekend and are looking forward to Monday, school time and all that. And I also hope that you had a great time during your vacation of Bible um, lessons, your Bi vacation Bible school, sorry. So um, our lesson today is focused on the mystery of the Holy Trinity and uh, we will be understanding God the Father from the Holy Trinity. I don't know how many of you guys have heard about what the Holy Trinity is or if you even understand it. So our lesson today will be an attempt for us to understand what is the Holy Trinity, who is part of the Holy Trinity and so on. So before we get into our lesson today, um, I just want to remind you that um, I think the last four or five weeks we did a series of lessons focused on the life of a believer. Um, in those lessons, we learned that uh, a believer, first of all, had the duty to obey the word of God. A believer was also supposed to live a life of love, loving God and loving other people. We also learned that a believer was supposed to live a life of faith. And finally, that a believer should live a life of prayer. And if you remember, as we learned all those lessons, we kept saying the word of God says and we should do. So our lesson today is to help us understand more who is God and um, who is part of the Holy Trinity. So I'll just briefly define the, uh, define the Holy Trinity or explain what it is. It's really our core Christian belief that our God Jehovah is part of the Holy Trinity. So he is one God, but he is one God and three persons at the same time. I know that sounds <laughs> a bit confusing already, right? So to just help you understand that, I made a little triangle, a 3D triangle. And I know that you did this exercise with Auntie Tama. So the whole purpose of that exercise was for us to come to this. So when this triangle stands, you see that it's one triangle, but it's got three sides, right? So the main base of the triangle is God, right? But then on one side, we have God the Father. On the other side, we have God the Son. And on the other side, we have God the Holy Spirit. So God exists as a trinity. One God, but showing himself to us in three different persons. So these three different persons are all 100% God and they all come together as God. So our focus for today is on God the Father. Next week, we'll look at God the Son, and the other week, we'll look at God the Holy Spirit. To help you further understand the Holy Trinity, maybe I'll use an egg. So you see, when you look at it, it's one egg, right? But this one egg has got three parts. It's got the shell, it's got the egg white, and it's got the yolk. When you peel it, the shell will be a shell on its own, when you remove the egg white, it will be egg white on its own. When you remove the, uh, the yolk or the egg yellow, it will be egg yellow on its own. But can you call any, of one, any one of those uh, parts as an egg? No. So the three must exist in one to be an egg. So this sort of just tries to explain to you what the Holy Trinity is. I know you may have more other questions, um, but I think as Christians, the comfort we should get is our minds are not as big as God's mind. And so there will be questions that we would have that we may not even understand while we're on earth. But when we go to heaven, it will be clearer. So I'm gonna cut the egg and just show you what I mean. I'm gonna use my knife. If you're going to try this at home, 
please use an adult to ask an adult to help you. Okay, so there we are. I hope you can all see this. On the outside, we have the shell. On the inside, we have the white and we have the yellow. Each of these can't be an egg on their own, but each of these together are an egg. That is how the Holy Trinity um, works. So to help us further understand um, the Holy Spirit, I'll invite you to watch uh, this video and then we'll come back and discuss afterwards. There's only one God, but he is three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This is called the Trinity. More explanation, please. What's a Trinity? What's a Trinity? That sounds like a big question, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Big questions with a fat number. What is a Trinity? That's a good question. Dr. Schnivenhausen? Yeah, a very good question. The word Trinity means three in one. Try unity. Three in one. This is God. He is one. The one true God. But the Bible talks about God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and in the New Testament, God the Son. So there are three gods? No, the Bible tells us over and over that God is one, but God is made up of three persons. It's sort of like a triangle. A triangle has three sides, yet it is one triangle. So God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are the three sides of God. So God has parts? No, this is where it gets tricky. God the Father isn't a part of God, he's completely God. And God the Son isn't a part of God, he's completely God. The same is true for the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. All three persons are completely God. That makes my head hurt. Yes, it's a puzzler. Maybe a song would help. Oh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three are God, all three are one. I hope this song can clear it up. The limits of a human brain will make it tricky to explain how one and three can be the same. But read the Bible and you'll see three persons in the Trinity. Three one and two and three, three persons in the Trinity, all in one, how could it be? Three persons in the Trinity. So there are three persons within God, and each has a different role in God's rescue plan. Does one of them juggle? No, no juggling in the Godhead. Well, I take that back. I suppose there could be juggling in the Godhead, but it isn't mentioned in the Bible. The Bible teaches that God the Father launches the rescue plan so that we can live with him again. He sends the Holy Spirit to help us do whatever he needs us to do in that plan. God led the Israelites through the desert and gave Moses the strength to stand up to Pharaoh. The Spirit of God filled the judges with power to save Israel from her enemies. When Saul became king, God sent his spirit to help Saul defeat the Philistines. When Saul disobeyed over and over, God took his spirit away. And now, in 1 Samuel, God fills David with his spirit when Samuel anoints him as Israel's next king. Cool. Um, what about God the Son? What does he do? Oh, that's the best part. But we won't get to it until the New Testament. Oh, come on, give me a clue. Well, it has something to do with a blessing for the whole world, the final promise God gave Israel. But I won't say any more. Ooh, I'm starting to connect the dots. Okay, kids, so welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope the explanation in the video on the Holy Trinity made a bit more sense, so it was clearer than the explanation I gave. 
So you might be asking yourself, okay, so where do you get this concept of the Holy Trinity? Where is it in the Bible? And I'll refer you to Matthew chapter 28, 19, where Jesus, after he had died and rose again, was leaving a commandment to his disciples. And he was saying, go and make disciples of all the nations. Go and tell them about the gift of salvation. Go and tell them about Jesus Christ's resurrection. Go and tell them about the love of God and how God had to sacrifice his own son to die for us, to take away our sin. And there's one thing that Jesus said which was very, very important. And in Matthew, in Matthew 28, 9, 19, it reads that, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So when you read that scripture, you then understand that God is in three persons. He is God the Father, He is God the Son, and He's God the Holy Spirit. God the Father being Jehovah, our Creator, God the Son being God coming in the form of Jesus Christ, who died and rose again for our salvation, and God the Holy Spirit being the Holy Spirit that came down on earth when Jesus went up to be with the Father. And the Holy Spirit is with us today to lead and guide us in our lives as Christians. So obviously when we watch the video, I think one of the things that we saw from that video, as I earlier said, was that there is one God, but he has appeared to mankind from the Old Testament and in the New Testament in one of three forms. And that each of the persons of God, each of the persons of the Holy Spirit, that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are distinct, 100% God on their own, and together still come back as one God. And so like I said, we will now focus on God the Father, God our Creator. Next week we we'll look at God the Son, the other week we we'll go look at God the Holy Spirit. So who is God the Father? Who is God our Creator? If we go back to the book of Genesis, we see how God created the world. Okay, everything in it from man to the plants and everything else. So we see God appearing to us in the New Old Testament, sorry, as God our Creator. The same God our Creator is the one that then decided to come up with the plan of salvation for mankind when Adam and Eve sinned against God in the Garden of Eden. God the Son is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who now came to do what God the Father had planned that to save mankind he would send God the Son to come and die and take our place and renew, rebuild our relationship with God. God the Holy Spirit then came after God the Son, Jesus Christ, ascended into heaven when he resurrected from the dead. So God the Father, God our Creator has so many aspects or things or what can I say? attributes about him or character, yes. There are so many elements of God the Father's character and we will focus on that today. So we have already said, first of all, he's the creator, he created the whole universe and so on and so forth. Can you imagine that God thought of creating all the things that he did? I'm sure you and I can't even create a plant. We can't create an ant, we can't create an animal, but God, is so knowledgeable, so wise, so powerful that he was able to create all the beautiful things that we see in this creation, that we see on earth. That tells you that God has a great, great, great creative power that we can't even understand. Apart from being our creator, he is also God, our father. I know boys and girls, you have 
parents, maybe your mother, maybe your father, or if you don't have your parents, at least you have people that are older than you, people that take care of you, people that provide whatever you need. Usually, the people that provide for you kids are parents, a father and a mother. That is who God is to us. He is our provider. He takes care of our needs. He's able to provide for us depending on whatever we ask of him for as long as our request to God is in line with his word. God is also a life giver. If you remember when he created the animals, when he created man, he put his breath in man. When he created man, before he put his breath, man was dead, man was just a creation. But when God breathed his life into man, man came alive and was able to breathe and that is how we breathe today. So the life that we have is a life that has been given to us by God. So God is also a life giver. God the Father is a life giver. Then I'm going to use a few complicated terms, but I'm going to explain them just so that you understand. God is an all-powerful God. He is omnipotent, meaning he's all-powerful. He's able to do anything and everything we can ever imagine. I use the example of creating, creating human beings, creating plants, creating ants. I mean, can you imagine the number of different types of insects and birds and animals that are there? It had to take someone who's so powerful to create all those different things, all of them different, none of them being the same. That's how powerful our God is. God is also omnipresent. He is all-knowing. He knows everything. He knows everything about the past. He knows everything about today. He knows everything about our future. I don't think any of us know as much. Maybe we know a few things about our past, but it's not everything that we know. We definitely don't know what's going to happen today, but God knows. We don't know what will happen tomorrow, but God knows. So that is how powerful God is. There's another concept about God the Father. God is omnipresent, meaning he is present in all places at the same time. Can you imagine that? I know that I, right now I'm here with you guys. I can't be at home at the same time. I can't be at the office at the same time. I can't be shopping at Manda Hill at the same time. But God, with him, he is able to be here with us. He is with the person who's at Manda Hill. He is with the person who's at home. He is with the person who's at the office. He is with the person who's in hospital. He is omnipresent, present everywhere. That's another great attribute about our God. And because of that, we should always be then comforted that it doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter what we're going through. The God who is all-knowing, all-seeing, present everywhere, is always our able and present help in time of need. That's why it doesn't matter where we are, we can always call upon him and he'll be there to protect us as his children, to provide for us, to meet our need for as long as our need is in line with the word of God. There's another aspect of God, the Father, which is that God is immutable. That means God does not change. He is the same yesterday, he's the same today, he'll be the same forever. The way he loved you yesterday is the way he will love you today, he's the way he will love you tomorrow. Tomorrow he will not love you any less than he loves you today, no matter what you do. So he never changes. Finally, God is eternal meaning he will live forever. He has lived before the earth was formed. He will live after the earth. I know some of you might be asking, okay, so hmm, then who created God? Who's God's mother? Who's God's father? 
Unfortunately, like I said earlier, there are some things that even we Christians can't understand because our minds are small. It's very difficult for us to understand the full concept of God. And I really do look forward to going to heaven because I think I'd like to ask God some of those questions so that I'm more clearer on where it all began. But what we must just know is that God is eternal. He was there before us. He will be there after us. So remember I'd say that God has uh, shown himself to different people, to different Christians in different ways. In the Old Testament, in the time of Abraham, the time of Moses, the time of David, in the New Testament, in the time of Paul, in the time of building the Christian church, and even in our time today. And so, God is also known by other names, you see. God is known as Jehovah Shalom, meaning Jehovah our peace, our peace giver. So even when we are going through difficult times, we have struggles, we have challenges, as we pray, we should know that our God, the God the Father, is also a God who gives us peace. He is also known as Jehovah Rohi, our shepherd. So he guides us and he protects us. For as long as we want to be guided by him, for as long as we yield to him, for as long as we read his word, he is always ready and able to lead and guide us as God, our shepherd. He is also known as Jehovah Jireh. Um, if you remember the story of Abraham, Abraham and Sarah, his wife, didn't have children for a long time. And in their old age, God blessed them with a son called Isaac. But at the same time, God then said to Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your only son. And I want you to do it at a particular mountain. And so Abraham took his son there and they went and went and went. And as they were going, Isaac asked his father, we are going there, where is the sacrifice? And the father said, God himself will provide us with the lamb, Jehovah Jireh. And right before Abraham sacrificed his son Isaac, God did provide a lamb for sacrifice. And so it was known that on the mountain of God, Jehovah Jireh will provide. So he is known as God, our provider. He is also known as God, uh, as Jehovah Nisi our victory when we fight battles it may be physical battles physical wars it may be the difficulties that we go through spiritually he is the one that gives us victory and he's known as jehovah nisi he is also known as jehovah rafa our healer when we're sick and we pray the healing part of God then moves in to heal us. He is also known as Jehovah El Shaddai, the promiser and the giver of blessings. I mean, we all like blessings, right? And uh, God has made so many promises in his word about how he blesses children and so on and so forth. And every time we see that blessing that God has promised coming to pass, we see him coming through for us as Jehovah El Shaddai. He is also known as Jehovah El Olam, meaning the everlasting God. Remember I told you earlier that God is eternal. He was there before. He will be there today. He will be there tomorrow. He is the everlasting God. Then there's also another thing about God the Father that I think we already know but which I want to remind you guys about God hates sin if you remember I think a few weeks ago maybe five six weeks ago we had had a lesson on what sin is and sin is doing anything that is against God's Word and we also learned that we find God's Word in the Bible so basically sin is doing anything outside what the Bible tells you to do so God does not like sin. God is saddened when we are disobedient. He is also a very just God, meaning 
when you do wrong, there is a consequence for doing wrong. So he's also a God of justice. And that is why when sin was done, there was the punishment of death. And then Jesus Christ came in to step in and say, no, for those who would choose to accept the gift of Jesus Christ, this salvation, they will not go through that death, but will have everlasting life. So you see God there as also being a God of mercy. So our God is really loving. He wants us to relate with him. He wants us to know him. He wants to provide all of our needs. He also does not want any of us to suffer eternal death. Because the truth is, after we leave this earth, for those of us who may not have accepted Jesus Christ's gift of salvation, would have died in sin. And remember, I said, dying in sin leads to eternal death. So, out of his love for us, like I said earlier, he sent his son, God, in the form of Jesus Christ to come and die for us today. So, you might be wondering, okay, so I would like to have a relationship with this God the Father, how do I do it, and so on and so forth. Your journey into getting into a relationship with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, is by looking at yourself and saying, okay, it's true, I am a sinner, I have made mistakes, but I also now know that there's a way out of it. There's a way out of it by following the gift of salvation given to me by Jesus Christ. If you want to make Jesus Christ your forever friend, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you then are redeemed. You then are reconnected back to God and you can then enjoy a relationship with God the Father. I mean, who doesn't want to experience God the Father in the various ways I've talked about? You know, the everlasting God, the all-powerful God, the God our provider, the God who fights for us, the God who heals us. So God the Father is saying to you today, He loves you so much and He wants you to experience ex eternal life. But the way to experience eternal life is through accepting the gift of Jesus Christ, which is the gift of salvation. And if you would like this prayer, if you would like to do this, I will lead you into a prayer shortly. So I know there's a lot that we've spoken about today, but I hope that you have at least understood today what the concept of the Holy Trinity is, which is our God, our Creator, in three persons. We have looked at God the Father today, next week we'll look at God the Son, and the other week we'll look at the God, God the Holy Spirit. And once we understand God in those three sides, when we now talk about Jesus Christ, when we now talk about the Holy Spirit, when we now talk about God the Father, you will understand fully that we are really talking about one person, but appearing to us in three different forms, in three different areas, in three different situations, but being the same God, our loving God, our creator and our provider. So for those of us who want to give our lives to Christ, I will lead you into this prayer. And please pray after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on that cross for me. Thank you for taking away my sins. Lord Jesus, I really want to know you more. I want to learn to trust you. Teach me how to pray. Teach me how to communicate with you. I invite you to come into my heart today and to be my forever friend. I invite you to be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me for my sin and make me a new creation today. In your mighty name I have prayed. Amen. If you have really prayed that prayer from the bottom of your heart, if you've really invited Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, guess what? That's happened. 
you have now crossed over into the life of eternity. You are now a child of God and you have every right to call this big God we've been talking about as your father. You have every right to expect that God the Father will look after you. He will protect you. He will heal you when you're sick. He will give you victory when you need it. He will just be your ever-present help. Even if you're in class and you can't understand, you will now know I can just call upon God. Lord, give me the ability to understand. Give me the ability to understand what my teacher is saying. And by His grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to achieve all that you set your hands to do for as long as it is in line with the Word of God. So we'll end our class here today. Um, I know you have a lot to think about. And the assignment I'll give you is really to just go and think about the Trinity, what we have learned about God the Father. And maybe for you to just write down what do you want God the Father to do for you? What do you want God the Father to teach you? What do you want God the Father to reveal to you? And after that, pray and tell him and you will see what will happen. God bless you guys. Have a great week and we'll see you again next week for part two of the Holy Trinity and we'll be looking at God the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Have a blessed Sunday.